companies are already giving up on short-form content. Last month, Meta announced that they will stop offering bonuses to short-form creators. Why, you ask? Well, it turns out that pushing short-form content actually loses Meta money. Here's the thing, while Instagram Reels have exploded in popularity, they're not exactly stealing market share away from TikTok. Rather, it's stealing market share away from themselves. Instead of scrolling through pictures or the newsfeed on Instagram, people are now scrolling through Reels. This doesn't sound like a big deal until you consider that Reels are substantially less profitable than Instagram's other products. In fact, according to Zuckerberg himself, people switching to Reels is costing the company $500 million every single quarter or $2 billion every year. And the most ironic part is that this entire time, Meta had been paying creators to make Reels. So really, they were paying to lose revenue. No wonder they stopped. But it's not just Meta who's pivoting away from short-form content either. TikTok themselves are very much trying to move away. In fact, they've been aggressively increasing their max video length. What started at 15 seconds grew to 60 seconds, to 3 minutes, to now 10 minutes. TikTok has even been experimenting with landscape mode on Android. So TikTok is very much headed towards the direction of becoming the YouTube where people don't search. Also, it's not like people search all that much on YouTube anyway. Most of the time, you just use the homepage to find videos. But what happened? Why are all these companies pivoting away from shorts? Wasn't shorts the new medium due to ever-decreasing attention spans and the need for constant stimulation? Well, it turns out that the answer is no. While short-form content is great at garnering a lot of attention in the short term, it's not exactly the best model for companies or audiences long term. Instagram and YouTube are starting to realize that they invested way too much money on a low ROI fad, and TikTok is fighting hard to not become the next line. So here's why companies got short-form content wrong and why they're already backing off. All successful creator-driven platforms need a strong base of creators. This is why platforms like YouTube and Spotify have even turned to offering exclusivity deals like it's NFL football or something. So it would be quite an issue if these platforms were struggling to grow a creator base, and that's very much the case with short-form content. This isn't to say that TikTok and Reels aren't able to garner a bunch of creators, because there's no shortage of that. But what there is a shortage of is loyal short-form creators. Here's the thing, 9 times out of 10, people don't start posting short-form content because that's what they truly want to do. Rather, creators start posting short-form content because they see opportunity, they see a gold rush. Most creators never find gold, but even those who do don't want to reinvest the profits into mining for more. It's simply too risky. Rather, what they want to do is sell the gold and start a stable business. In other words, they want to switch to long-form content. Much of this attitude can actually be explained by the algorithms used to promote short-form content. Your follower count on short-form content really means nothing. This is why it's such a gold rush. If you start posting today, you have as good of a chance of posting a viral video as someone with 10 million followers. Actually, I take that back. If a creator has that many followers, they're probably pretty good at making viral content. But the point is that the pivotal factor is the content itself, not the follower count. While this is great for new creators, it's absolute garbage when it comes to longevity. Creators are forced to always keep up with the latest trends and to put up something that can go viral instead of creating content that's actually impactful and meaningful. This is why you see so many TikTok stars that rise out of nowhere and then disappear faster than they blew up. Recently, I was watching an Iraq video where he trapped 25 TikTokers inside his house. Many of these creators had millions, if not tens of millions of followers. So I don't know if it's just me, but I had no idea who any of these people were. Let me know down below if you were in the same boat. But anyway, even creators who enjoy making short-form content want to switch to long-form because it's simply the smarter business decision. That right there covers basically 90% of short-form creators. The other 10% are actually already long-form creators. Personally, I'm guilty of this as well. A lot of creators have figured that they might as well try adapting their regular long-form content to short-form. The mentality is usually, 
If it works, great. If it doesn't, not a big deal. So little to say, no creator on TikTok, Instagram Reels, or YouTube Shorts is really loyal to said platform. For all of them, short-form content is really just a springboard to garner attention or a medium to expand their existing long-form content. So when you're trying to run a creator-driven platform with such people, well, let's just say it's difficult to say the least. But building up a loyal creator base is just the first of these platform's worries. Not only do these platforms have to deal with flaky creators, but they also have to deal with flaky advertisers. The reality is that no advertiser really wants to advertise on short-form content. This isn't to say that short-form advertising is always ineffective. Beheza, for example, has shown time and time again that short-form advertising is not only effective but can be super lucrative. But with that being said, shorts just don't vibe with most brands. I mean, can you imagine GE making a TikTok ad about the refrigerators or Intel making a TikTok ad about the new i9 processor? It just doesn't feel right. Now, some legacy companies are able to pull it off. A notable example that comes to mind is Coca-Cola, but just because they're able to make effective ads doesn't mean that they want to advertise on these platforms. The reality is that in most cases, these companies just don't want to associate with short-form content because they see it as a risk. I'm sure you're familiar with how companies don't want to associate with the following content on YouTube. Well, newsflash, this is basically the entirety of TikTok. But let's even put that aside. Let's say you're okay with advertising next to this type of content. You still have the challenge of running a successful ad campaign. While TikTok can be great for promoting products like this, it's not exactly great when it comes to building general brand awareness and visibility. Oftentimes, when companies like Apple or Coca-Cola put out an ad, they're not trying to get you to buy their product. They don't even want you to click on the ad or buy on the spot. Rather, they just want to build up their brand presence. This is decently possible on YouTube given that viewers are forced to watch for 5 or 15 seconds. But on TikTok, if an ad doesn't pique the viewer's interest within 0.2 seconds, they're gonna swipe up. This means that advertisers are forced to include some sort of a gimmicky hook, which again, just doesn't fit with their brand image. And if you don't believe me, you can just look at the numbers. For my usual videos, I generally get an ad rate of $4 to $5 per thousand views. For shorts, however, I generally get an ad rate of $0.05 cents per thousand views. This basically indicates that advertisers are 100 times less likely to bid on short-form ad slots as opposed to long-form ad slots. It also gives a lot more context as to why creators want to switch to long-form content so badly. The reality is that if you want to make a living off of short-form content, you have to pull in a brain-dead amount of views every single month. To make just $5,000 per month, for example, you have to pull in 100 million views. Let me phrase that in a different way. You have to reach one-eighth of the entire world population every single year just to make 60 grand. At least creators have the option to do direct brand deals or promote their own products. For these platforms, on the other hand, the only way they make money is through these ads. So even with their ridiculous scale, it's just not all that profitable. So it's no wonder why Meta is losing $2 billion every single year by pushing short-form content. While unloyal creators and hesitant advertisers are no doubt a pain in the neck, at least there's some hope with that. As more modern companies start advertising on short-form platforms, ad rates should go up, which should make creating short-form more worthwhile for platforms and creators. But something that these platforms can't recover from is a waning audience. The truth is that people are getting tired of predictable TikTok content, and the main reason for this is that these types of videos rarely have any substance. Every single video is based around a thirst trap or some sort of gimmick, but rarely do they have any sort of real takeaway or message. This is why people forget about most shorts within two minutes of watching it. It feels good in the moment, but the feeling doesn't last long. But wait a minute. Isn't people's attention spans getting crushed by these platforms? Well, to be honest, I think this effect is vastly overstated. TikTok is basically like ice cream. People like eating ice cream. They may even eat it on a daily basis. 
But just because a person eats ice cream, it doesn't mean that they're suddenly going to stop eating steak or pizza or burgers or real food in general. In fact, if you had the option of only consuming ice cream or pizza, I'm pretty sure that virtually everyone will choose pizza. Looking back, the pandemic forced most people to stay at home, which led to them snacking way more than usual. But as people return to their normal lives, their social media diet is also returning to real food, and this is already evident in the stats. In 2021, TikTok rose to be the most popular domain in the entire world. But in 2022, TikTok fell down to number 3 as Google and Facebook regained their leads. And looking forward, it seems like this trend will only continue as TikTok is looking more and more like Vine. I know that most of you just remember Vine as a big failure, but Vine was actually super popular for a period of time. In fact, at the end of 2015, Vine had as many as 200 million users. Why did Vine fail then, you ask? Well, you can take it from the horse's mouth itself. Twitter, the parent company of Vine, was unable and or unwilling to pay the creators that made the platform so popular in the first place. This was actually Jack Dorsey's biggest regret. But what is TikTok doing? Well, they're unable and or unwilling to pay the creators that made their platform so big. And as audiences and creators naturally shift back to Facebook and YouTube, these platforms see less of a reason to be so aggressive when it comes to promoting shorts. In the end, it's not surprising why companies are backing away from short-form content. The reality is that creators are just using shorts as a springboard, advertisers don't want to get involved, and audiences are by no means ditching long-form content. This isn't to say that TikTok is going to die like Vine, but what has become abundantly clear is that short-form content is simply an addition to long-form content, not a replacement like the media often suggests. So Meta and YouTube no longer feel threatened by TikTok. If anything, it's actually TikTok that strives to be more like Meta and YouTube so that they don't end up like Vine. Combine this with the recession and it simply makes no sense to bet so much on a historically flaky medium. And that's why companies are already giving up and pulling back on short form content. Did you ever buy into the short form craze? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you're glad that short form content is dying. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.